Tonight we're going to be talking about three houses. In our book, The Age of Reason by Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine says, my mind is my church. So we're going to talk about three houses tonight. We're going to talk about the house of the wicked. We're going to talk about the house of the righteous. And we're going to talk about the house of the of God. Three houses we're going to discuss tonight in the in scripture. Your mind is your house. My mind is my house. Christ's mind is in my house. And Christ's mind is in Christ's house. Your mind is in your house. My mind is in my house. Christ's mind is in my house. Christ's mind is in Christ's house. Nothing hurts, nothing has hurt me more during my years of preaching than to have my fathers desert me and my sons desert me. There's nothing that hurt me more during, that, during the time that I've been preaching than to have my fathers desert me and my sons, my firstborns at that, rise up against me. Nothing has distraught me. Nothing has discouraged me more in my 22, 23 years of preaching than to have my fathers desert me and my firstborn sons rise up against me. Lord, you did this. Lord, the Lord is the cause of my fathers deserting me and my firstborn sons rising up against me. Lord, you did this. When I talk about, when I talk about my fathers deserting me, I'm talking about my fathers in the flesh and my fathers in the spirit. When I talk about my sons, that is my firstborn sons, deserting me, I mean rising up against me, my two firstborn sons rising up against me. I'm talking about my son in the flesh and my son in the spirit. My father in the flesh that deserted me from the time I started preaching predestination and the sovereignty of God is Jimmy Lee Rogers. My spiritual father that deserted me from the time I began to preach predestination and the sovereignty of God is Jim Brown. My firstborn son in the flesh that rose up against me is my son, Dennis Brown. My firstborn son in the spirit that rose up against me is Michael Singleton. So that's what I mean when I said my fathers, with an S on the end, meaning two, which I do have, deserted me. That's Jimmy Lee Rogers in the flesh, my father of the flesh, and Jim Brown, my spiritual father, whom I did not adopt, but he adopted me. Again, who I did not adopt, he adopted me. Me, founded on the doctrine of predestination and the sovereignty of God. My firstborn son in the flesh that rose up against me is my biological son through my ex-wife, Dennis Brown. My spiritual son that has risen up and has rose up against me since the inception of this ministry is Michael Singleton. Michael Singleton was my firstborn son of this ministry. Now Dennis, my firstborn son of the flesh. Jimmy Lee Rogers, my first father, biological of the flesh. Jim Brown, my spiritual father in the spirit. So we're going to be talking about three houses tonight. Your mind in your house, my mind in my house, Christ's mind in my house and Christ's mind in Christ's 
house. We're going to be looking at the Old Testament word by ye, the Old Testament word for house, and the Old Testament, the Old Testament, the Old Testament word, the Old Testament, Old Testament, Old Testament word, the Old Testament word for house. Old Testament word for house is the word ba'i. And ba'i in the Old Testament, it's, it means family. It means family. It means daughter. It means family. It means daughter. It means family. It means daughter. It means steward. Steward of the house. It means steward. It means household. The household it means the household. And it means temple. The New Testament word, the New Testament word for house is oikos. Oikos means a house. It means house. It means a home. It means temple, and it means family. We're going to begin this study, we're going to look at the Old Testament unrighteous house. We're going to look at the Old Testament unrighteous house. We're talking about three houses. We're talking about three houses. So let's turn our back into Proverbs 3 and 33. We're looking at the Old Testament word by ye for the unrighteous house. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 33 says, The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. I'm at Proverbs 11 and verse number 29. We're looking at the unrighteous house. Proverbs 11 and verse number 29 says, He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind, and the fool shall be servant to the wise of heart. We look at Proverbs chapter 14 and verse number 11. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. flourish. We look at Proverbs 15 and verse number 25. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he will establish the border of the widow. We look at verse number 27. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house, but he that hateth guilt shall live. We look at Proverbs chapter 17 and verse number 1. Better is a dry morsel and quietness with that dry morsel than a house full of sacrifices, a lot of offerings, a bunch of money, and quarreling the day strife. We look at verse number 13. Whoso rewarded evil for good, that is receiving that good word of God, I preach that good word to you, and then you reward me evil for the good word of God that I preach and teach you. You return me evil for that good. Evil shall not depart from his house. Now remember we're talking about three houses. Your house, your mind, and your house. My man in my house, Christ's man in my house, and Christ's man in Christ's house. Proverbs 17, verse 13. Whoso rewarded evil for good, evil shall never depart from his house. We look at 21 and verse 12. We look at 21, verse 12. 
It says, the righteous man wisely considereth the house of the wicked. But God overthrew the wicked for their wickedness. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. That is what David said in Psalm 7. We look at Proverbs 25. We look at Proverbs 25. Okay. And verse number 17. All right. Look. Proverbs 25, 17. Withdraw your foot from your neighbor's house, lest he be weary of you. And so hate you. Now we're going to look at the house of the righteous in the same book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse number 7. The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. We look at Proverbs 14 and verse number 1. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish pluck it down with her hands. Proverbs 15 and verse number 6. In the house of the righteous is much treasure. She's not talking about earthly riches. A good man out of the good treasure of his house bring forth good things. So you can understand that. And the house of the righteous is much treasure. And a lot of word in his heart, in his house. But perverse, but uh, but the revenues of the wicked is trouble. 15, 6 again. In the house of the righteous is much treasure. But in the revenues of the wicked is Trouble. Proverbs 24 and verse number 3. We're looking at the righteous house now. That's what house we're talking about now. Proverbs 24 and verse 3. Through wisdom is a house built, and by understanding that house is established. Then we're going to go over to 1 Peter. I'm going to add this in with the righteous house. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. And we are going to read down to it for clarity to verse number 5. Wherefore, laying aside all minus and all guile, hypocrisy, envious, and all speakings in your house, I may add, <laughs> your house, man. Your house. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. This is what goes on, Cleo, in your house, Cleo. Mm -hmm. All right, understand what I'm saying. That's your house. Mm -hmm. That's your house. Wherefore, laying, all, laying aside all malice, all guile, hypocrisy, envious, all evil speaking that goes on in your mind, J.D., in your house. That's your house. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby in Christ's house. <laughs> If so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious in my house, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. You also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house in my house. You are built up a spiritual house in my house. You are built up a spiritual house in my house. So in my house, 
before you come in my house or before you came into my house or if you came into my house with this, I'm telling you, lay aside all matters in my house. Lay aside all God in my house. Lay aside all hypocrisy. I'm not going to put up with it in my house. Lay aside all envy and man in my house. Got to get rid of all that evil speaking in my house. As newborn babes, I'm going to teach you how you ought to behave yourself and conduct yourself in my house. As newborn babes, I'm going to teach you how to conduct yourself, how you ought to behave yourself in my house. Desire the sincere, sincere milk of the word. Don't desire to use malice in my house. Get rid of the desire of God in my house. Get rid of the desire of being a hypocrite in my house. All envy must leave my house. All evil speaking is not permitted in my house. Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow by that word that I'm going to teach you and feed you and use to nourish and nourish, use to nurture and nourish you in my house that you may grow that back. If so be, if so be, you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. To whom coming, to newborn babes, to whom coming, he comes to newborn babes. He comes to newborn babes. He comes to newborns. He comes to newborn babes. A living stone, disallowed indeed of grown folk. A grown folk. Grown folk don't want them. But chosen of God and precious. You also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Now let's turn over, let's turn over to Luke 19, 14. And that's Luke 19, Luke 19, verse number 46. And we're going to look at Christ's house. Amen. Luke 19, 46 says, Say unto them, it is written, it is written, It is written, my house is the house of prayer. But you, you mean, with your God, with your envy, with your evil speak, have made it a den of thieves. And he talked daily in the temple with the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people, the men sought to destroy him and could not find what they might do for all the people were very attentive to hear him in his house. The people were very attentive man, to hear him in his house. You ought to be attentive to hear me in my house. Then we go to Matthew 21, 13. You ought to be attentive to hear me in my house, not those men who was trying to run my house. 2113. 2113. Amen. And said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer. But you, you men, you chief priests, you scribes, you Pharisees, you hypocrites with your ill will and your 
evil speaking and all your malice. You have made my house. I wish I had a with you. The end of thieves. Then we go to Mark. There you go, baby. Baby got it already. <laughs> Best believe it. Your pastor's going to preach tonight, baby. You might as well get ready. You can get, you can get ready to witness, this, baby, because your pastor's going to preach. I'm going to be doing some preaching tonight. Y'all are going to hear some good preaching tonight. Not so much teaching, but you're going to hear some good preaching tonight. We ain't been preached to in a long time. We need to preach. You don't think I know how to preach. Preach tonight. I'm in mean, verse number 17 in Mark chapter 11. He said, and he taught, saying unto them, in his house. He taught in his house. And he taught, saying unto them, it is, is, is it not written, my house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. With all your malice, with all your guile, with all your hypocrisy, with all your envy, and all your evil speaking, you have made my house a den of thieves. Let's go to Luke. Let's go to Luke. No, I don't want to go to Luke. That's good enough. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 3. In verse number one. Now I've been teaching you on the word passive on Sunday. And I spoke to you concerning another book that I had. This is this is beyond basics. This is the book I was speaking to you about. The other one I was talking to you about was the syntax. I think I brought it with me. Yeah, yeah. This is the basic of New Testament. This is what I was preaching. Out of the teaching you out of Sunday, which I'm gonna continue. Then I'm gonna go. After you, you learn. I feel you have learned a little bit about the basis of New Testament syntax. I'm gonna take you beyond the basics. I'm gonna take you beyond the basics, and you pray that God give you a revelation. You pray that He give you an understanding. Hebrews chapter three. Let's go there. Hebrews chapter three. We go to Hebrews chapter three. We're on Hebrews chapter 3. And we want to look at verse number 1. It says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful unto him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. Every preacher got their own house, Jeremiah. You in my house now, Jeremiah. You in my house right now, J.D. Mm -hmm. Cleo, right now you in my house. You in my house, Eric. You do what I say in my house. You don't do what you think in my house. Your mind don't mean nothing when you in my house, Carolyn. You in my house right now, Lolita. And I'm going to be faithful in my house. You conduct yourself the way I tell you to conduct yourself in my house. You behave yourself the way I tell you to behave yourself, John, in my house. Where you sitting at right now, Mama Rhonda and Van, you in my house. Understand that, Nixon. And when you come through those doors, you in my house. When you outside them doors, you still in my house. When you're at home, you're still a part of my house. When you go to the store, to jewels, when you're out there working your job, whatever you do during the day, you're still a part of my house. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. But this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses. We're talking about the man Christ Jesus. And as much as he had built it, the house. And as much as he who have built it, the house. Hath more honor than the house that he built. For every house, J.D., is built by, by some man. Now don't forget what it said in 
Peter, you are being built up a spiritual house in my house. Every house is built by some man here. So I'm going to be faithful in my house. This word build it, this word build it over here in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 4 means to prepare thoroughly. This word build it means to prepare thoroughly. Why didn't I get the word? Hmm. That was very smart of you, young man. I got definition. But I don't got words. I do that all the time. <laughs> I'll be so enthused by the definition. I did not write down the word. Hebrews 3, 4, number 2680. I go to 26. I'm at 25. I'm at 24. 2574. I'm looking for 26. And I'm looking for 80, 87, 26. 2680. I'm looking at the word. Kata as. Kata. 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 It's a compound word. Kata. Escuazo. Kata, it's the word kata. He ran them out what? Yeah. Stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he ran them out of the top of them. Kata. Oh, that's a good one right there. Kata. As. Skew azo. It's a compound word. Kata s q s q azo. That's how you pronounce it. That's the word build. That's the word build. That word build. That means to prepare third. To prepare. This is my job. To prepare third. It means to prepare thoroughly. It means to create. It means to create. It means to create or to make. Or to make ready. I don't know what's happening to this pen. Well, they were these are some cheap ones right here. What's going on with them? Knock you down. It means to make, make ready. It means to create. It means of, it's talking about of one, that would be a person, of one who makes, who makes, makes ready, makes ready for a person, the person I'm making you ready for is Jesus the Christ. So I'm going to present you as a what, J.D.? I'm going to present you as a what, Carolyn? Chase virgin. I'm going to present you as a chaste virgin. I'm making you ready. I'm the one make, where, I make, where am I making you ready then, Lolita? Yeah. In my house. I'm making you ready to present you as a chaste virgin to Jesus the Christ in my house. And it's for a thing. The thing is, the thing which be an e event will be eternal life. Hello? Amen. That's what I'm making you ready for. I'm preparing you for a person so you can be presented. You can be presented. You can be presented. That's what I'm making you ready for, Glenn. I'm making you married. I'm making you ready, Glenn, to meet your husband. To, so, so you can be presented as a chaste Virgin. That's why I keep telling you, you ain't going nowhere without the preach. I don't care what nobody say. Y'all can listen to these false teachers, these, these apostates that don't left this ministry all you want. You ain't going nowhere without me, Eric. I'm presenting you as a chaste virgin. 
presented you as a chaste virgin for eternal life. When Jesus come back, he's going to give you the gift. That's what he's going to give you. If you are ready, and you're getting ready, where am I going to run? In your house. In my house. This word, this word is a verb. The kata askuazo as is a verb. It's an action word. It's a verb. This is, it's a verb. It's a verb. It's present. It's present tense. So that means I'm making you ready right now. Right now, man, you're going through the process of being made ready. And it is passive. That means the work has been doing in you, man. You did not decide to do the work. You don't even know what's going on right now. It's a work going on in you, man. I can't say that. And you don't even know that the work is going on. You don't feel it. You didn't make a choice. You're not even aware. And it's indicative. It's indicative. This is the word build. Indicative means the state or the action, I like this pen right here. This is a good pen and gear, chisel tip, fine point. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm talking about. Look, look, look. The job caught on to any of you thinking about buying it. <laughs> 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 on John John something. He, he started laughing. He knows exactly what I'm saying. Uh, pen and gear, chisel tip. <laughs> no, John will start laughing. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I said, that preacher think he's slick. <laughs> they an action represented, represented the state, that is the eternal life, and the action, which is you being prepared, is certain, man. I know you're going. That's why I told you what I told you, Cleo. Don't worry about whatever the report is. We ain't worried about it. <laughs> certain or realized. You being made ready to meet Christ right now. That is certain and it's going to be realized. That's the word building. This is the word building. This is the word building. Yeah, boy, I like this right here. You see that, Lolita? You see me at the service. That's it. All right, with your credit card. That's Hebrews 3 4. This word building in Hebrews 3 4 is kata askuazo. It means to create, it means to make ready of one who makes thoroughly ready. I'm the one who's making you ready, Jeremiah. And when I get through Jeremiah, you're going to be thoroughly ready for the person who is Jesus the Christ. I'm going to present you to him as a chaste version for the thing that you're going to receive, Jeremiah. And that is eternal life. And I'm doing this, J Jeremiah, in my house. I'm the steward in here. You in my household. You my daughter. You in my temple. You in my family. This is going on in my house. This is what goes on in my house. So this word building is a verb. That's the action. It's present tense. That means it's happening right now <laughs> as I speak. And it's passive and it's indicative. That means the state that you're going to end up in as being chased. And the action, that means I'm making you ready. This is already represented as certain. You can bank on the Jeremiah. And it's already realized in the eyes of God. Do you hear what I said, Leo? Mm -hmm. It's a done deal. You're just going through the process, man. All I'm doing, man, is making you ready. Did you hear what I said? And the reason it's going on, man, it means to pray. That's because you elect. Okay? So in crisis eyesight, in God's eyesight, in heaven is already done because everything is now in heaven. Everything is eternal in heaven. Ain't no time, no 24-hour days in heaven. Do you understand what I'm saying, J.D.? All you're doing, J.D., is going through the process right now. I have to make you ready. I have to make you ready. And you have built out a spiritual house with the word of God. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm building up. I'm making a spiritual house in my house. So this word is found in Greek grammar beyond the basin, up on the passive. I read to you what passive mean. I read to you what passive mean. And in my study yesterday, I happened to see it. I said, Lord have mercy. There go Hebrews 3, 4. 
Every house is built by someone and it's passive. The house that I'm working on is the house of God and it's passive. The most common use of the passive voice is to indicate that the subject, that's Van Whitfield, receives the action. I'm making him ready. No implication is made. No, and no implication is made about cognition, volition, or cause on the part of the subject. The usage occurs both with and without express agent. Then over, over here, over here, at the beginning of it, it talks about the ultimate agent and everything, but this is beyond. This goes a little farther. It talks about the ultimate agent, the intermediate agent, and the impersonal agent, like I taught you Sunday. But this goes a little further. This is beyond the basis. This goes a little further. Uh, and I like the definition that it begins at the beginning of the passive voice. It says, in general, it can be said that in the passive voice, Lolita is acted upon or Lolita receives the action expressed by the verb. Build it. No volition, nor even necessarily, no volition, nor even necessarily awareness of the action. You don't even know the building is going on because it's spiritual. It was implied on the part of Lolita. That is, Lolita may or may not be aware. It's volition, Lolita's choice, may or may not be involved. But these things, it's not stress. Lolita's volition and Lolita's awareness. It's not stress when the passive is used. Again, so you can understand. In general, it can be said that in the passive voice, JD is acted upon or receives the action expressed by the verb. Build it. That's the verb. No choice, nor even necessarily awareness of the action is implied on the part of JD. That is, JD may or may not be aware. JD's volition or choice may or may not be involved. But these things, JD's awareness of the action, JD's volition are not stressed in the passive. She ain't got nothing to do with it. That's not what a stress lies when you use passive. The stress always lies upon the ultimate agent, the, intermed the intermediate agent, and the impersonal means, which is the word. The stress is always pressed on the intermediate. The stress is on the ultimate agent. That's you. The, excuse me. No. Well, I'm not the ultimate agent. No. The ultimate agent is the Holy Spirit. Okay. The intermediate agent is the preacher. Oh, the impersonal means is the word of God. Okay. That's where the stress lies at. The stress is not on you. Just put it like that. Okay. The stress is never on the individual when the passive is used. It's not on you being aware of what's happening. It's not on you as being as, uh, as you making a choice for the action to happen. You're not involved at all. The stress is on the ultimate agent, the Holy Spirit, the intermediate agent, the preacher, and the impersonal means the Word of God. That's where the stress lies at. In, the, in a passive verb, Verb building is present, passive, and dignity. The state or the action that's going on in you right now is represented as certain or realized by the one who called you, that is, the Father. The ultimate agent is the one that's working. The intermediate agent is the one that's working. The impersonal means the instrument they are using is the word of God. You're not going to find the Holy Spirit without the word of God. The Holy Spirit is the ultimate agent in working with the preacher, with the word of God. The Holy Spirit is the ultimate agent working with the preacher, with the word of God. 
you don't make no choice in that. You had no choice in that. And you're not even aware it's going on. Am I clear about that? Yes. Are you clear about it now? Yes. All right then. Tonight I'm going to speak a parable. This is my parable. You come in my house, stain and tarnish my ministry, pollute my family, disrespect my God, cast reproach upon my God in my house. That's what many do. Many has came in my house. Stain and tarnish my ministry, polluted my family, disrespected my God in my house. Shame and disobeyed my God's word in my house. My ministry. My family brought shame and disgrace upon my Savior, my Father, in my house. Raised hell in my house. Caused confusion. In my house, my ministry, my family, God gave me. Raise hell in my house. Cause confusion in my house. My ministry, my family. God gave me lied in my house. God gave me lied in my ministry. God gave me lied to. Me and my family in my house, God gave me. And then you get mad at me because I tell what you did in my house. I'm a priest tonight. Now. <laughs> then you get mad at me. Because I tell what you did in my house. Angry with me for what you did in my house. My ministry and I expose you. And then have the audacity, the boldness. The courage, the shamelessness to talk about me for saying about you how you behave in my streets. <laughs> then have the audacity, the boldness, the courage. The shamelessness to talk about me for saying about you how you behave in my house. Have the nerve to say I am wrong. Told everybody my business, how I behave, what I did in your house. Your ministry. <laughs> Told everybody how I violated strangers in your house. 
choose. Your ministry will choose. Your family ridicule for what you did in my house. Preach, preacher. Now you pissed off at me because of what you did in my house. Like I betrayed you when you betrayed me because I trusted you in my house. You got the nerve to accuse me because of what you did in my house. Your family ridiculed for what you did in my house. How my sheep is looked down upon for what you did among their kinsmen in the flesh in my house. Not only that, but you rise up against me in my house. In my house. My God, my Lord, and my Savior gave me my ministry. My Lord, my King gave me got mad at me because I told you how my God commanded me how to command you direct you instruct you in my house Amen. got mad at me because I told you how my Because mix 
So when I'm pointing at you, yeah. three of them is pointing back at me. <laughs> but mix them when I mock you, all of them pointing at you. <laughs> <laughs> mix them when I mock you. You see, ain't none of them pointing back at me, mix five. <laughs> That means all the fault is on you, mix. Yes, when I mock you, you say ain't nothing pointing back at me. Really? It means all the fault is on you. So we mock them in my house. You come in my house, you sin in my house, you cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine that you received from me. I mock you. Ain't nothing pointing back at me, mix. That's your fault. <laughs> You see my hand mixing? That's called a hand to God mixing. That means you totally guilty, ain't nothing pointing back at the preacher. Did you hear what I said, Cleo? <laughs> this is what we do in my house. I beseech you, brother, and mob them which cause division and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they that are us are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, they deceive the hearts of the simple. Where at? In my house. But he is deceiving the simple mind, the people in my house. In my family. In my ministry. Oh, I'm a preacher tonight. <laughs> We, we Romans, what do you mean we? We, who are we? We is my father, we is his son, and his Holy Spirit. <coughs> we, my father, his son, and his Holy Spirit, we cry loud and we spare not. That's what we do in my house. I lift up my voice like a trumpet. I show my people, God's people, their transgression, their sins in my house. Amen. I show God's people their transgressions, their sins in my house, in my family, in my ministry. That's what we do here. And when I'm talking about we, I'm talking about my father. I'm talking about his son. And I'm talking about his Holy Spirit. Oh yeah, we work together. That's what we do. We mob. That's what we do. We cry loud. We stand up. We lift up our voice like the trumpet. We show my people, God's people, their transgressions, their sins. That's Isaiah 58 and 1. We show them your iniquities have separated between you and my Father, His Son, and the Holy Spirit and me. Your iniquities have separated between you and my God and my house. Your sins have hid His face from you and my house. Your lips have spoken lies in my house, my ministry, my family, He gave me. Your tongue has murdered perverseness in my house. And I'm supposed to be silent while you do all this in my house? Your works were works of iniquity in my house. Your feet ran to evil in my house. Just like Cleo, man let me stay in his house. And man said, preacher, you can sleep in the basement. Man, give me a room in the basement. Three o'clock at night, man rolls over. Ah, take a little stretch, open up his eyes, and I'm creeping out of Candace's room. <laughs> what would you do a man do to a man that did that? Your house. Let me stay all night at your house, Eric. And got me down there sleeping in the little room. You see me coming out the room where the little babies is and where your wife is. You've been ready to kill me in your house. Well, how do you think I feel in my house? 
then you got the nerve to get mad. Because I rebuke you in my house. I reprove you in my house. I chasten you and scourge you with the word. In my house, I reveal your sins and your iniquities you commit in my house. You got the audacity to be mad at me because of the way you conducted yourself in my ministry, in my family, that God gave me. Your tongue has murdered perverses in my house. Your works were works of iniquity in my heart. Your, your feet ran to evil in my house. Your thoughts were thoughts of iniquity while I'm preaching the word of God in my house. Your thoughts were the thoughts of iniquity while I'm preaching the word of God in my house. Violated my daughter in my house. Came in my house. I invited you in my house. And you came in my house and violated my daughter in my house. I invited you in my house. Came and stole out of my house. Violated my daughter in my house. Then I let you back in my house. You went on in your sin. I got the audacity to be mad at me about what you did in my house, in my family, with my daughter. Tear it down or seeking to tear it out what God gave me to build up. I wish they had a witness. Amen. Violated my daughter in my house, my family, my ministry. Took care of your family in my house when you could not take care of your family. Supplied you with substance when you was in prison out of my house, my ministry, my family. And I ain't talking about I did one person like that, am I did I tell you? No. I ain't talking about I did two people like that, am I tell you? Am I mixed? No. Am I bleeding? No. I, I ain't just talking about one person, I'm talking about several people that we supplied with substance yes, while they was in prison. I got the lectures at home. I got all the letters y'all wrote me. Oh, yes, I do. I got them. With substance that came out of my house. My family. My ministry. Most of you out there got what you got because you got the counsel and the wisdom out of my house. Talk back with me, J.D. Amen. Oh, no lead, I tell you, the good Cleo come now. Ask J.D. to help him. I say, J.D., don't help Cleo. J.D., you helping him. J.D., if I tell you don't help Cleo, is you going to help him? No. I told you that. I told you. She in my house. Mm -hmm. That's my daughter. If I say, J.D., don't help Karen, is you helping her? No. This is my house. I say, don't help her. Don't help her. This is my house. I say, don't help her. my house trying to run my house and you mad at me you receive counsel and wisdom for you to be where you are right now out of my house You receive counsel and wisdom for
for you to be where you are right now out of my house from my ministry my God speaking through me wisdom counsel you receive from for you to be where you are right now out of my house from my ministry my God speaking through me yes my God did it but he did it through me out of my house my ministry try and you deceive others in my house stole affections from sheep out of my house this is what that this is what Absalom did to his death. Go to first, go to first seven, go to second seven fifteen. Go to call yourself my son. Then you stole all the affection and the desire, at least try to, and deceive the sheep that is in my house. There's nothing new under the sun. These people that don't been through this ministry and scandalizing my name and came in here trying to destroy and tear down my house. It's been done before. Go to 2 Samuel 15. Amen. 2 Samuel 15. Amen. Look at 2 Samuel 15. Look at 2 Samuel 15. Amen. You get to 2 Samuel 15. You got 2 Samuel 15? Amen. Look at 2 Samuel 15. Are you there? Amen. Look at 2 Samuel 15. And look at verse number 4. Are you there? Amen. Are you, are you there? Amen. Are you there? Amen. Are you there? Amen. Look at set, look, look, look at let's look at verse number one. You ready? Amen. Absalom tried to steal the kingdom from his dad. Like they come in here and try to steal my sheep and my rule from y'all. Mm -hmm. Up and down the street, walking and whispering in my sheep's ear. Mm -hmm. I know what you did. They don't understand what the word means when it says the eyes of the Lord is every place beholding the evil and the good. You know who the eyes of the Lord is, JD? You had preached, I seen so and so, so and so doing that. <laughs> you the eyes of the Lord, JD. You the eyes of the Lord. You say, preach, I seen so and so, so and so going down the street with so and so, so and so. And Lord leader say, preacher, did you see so and so, so? You the eyes of the Lord, JD. They think the eyes of the Lord are some spooky and some strange in the dog going. No! The eyes of the Lord is in every place. They think the eyes of the Lord are some spooky. That's why they're stupid and don't know what they was doing. Amen. They think the eyes of the Lord are somebody just floating in the air. God will care. No, you the eyes of the Lord, JD. You the eyes of the Lord, man. You the eyes of the Lord, Lolita. Jeremiah, you the eyes of the Lord. You the eyes of the Lord. You look at chapter 15, you see it? Yes. Those of you who got Scofield Bible, it says, Absalom steals. That's what they came in my ministry and did. They came in my ministry and stole the affection out of people. Now the people is leaning towards them because once you plant that seed of doubt in a weak individual's ear, and that weak individual is leaning towards that wicked voice of Absalom, who has planted the seed in the doubt, the seed of doubt in their ear, J.D. by them not being upright, and they leaning over, all you gotta do is push them a little bit and they're gonna what? Once you plant the seed of doubt about the preacher in a weak sheep mind, they're already weak and ill in doubt. They already a little bit stubborn and rebellious because they still in the flesh. They got weak faith. Once you plant a seed of doubt in their ear, they always gonna be leaning that way, JD. It's hard for me to get them back upright, JD. That's why it's such a struggle in this mess. Because many is leading toward that one voice with the seed of doubt, which is Satan. They're still in the flesh. 
So clear, all you got to do is push them a little bit. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do to you, clear? They're going to fall. This is what Absalom is. You come in my ministry and seek to steal the affection of my sheep. You want to steal the loyalty and the devotedness that my sheep had with me before you got here. Loyal, dedicated, devoted. And everything you got right now, you got through my ministry. You got out of my house. The way you living right now, you got it out of my house. The way they living right now, they got it out of my house. I brought them out through the counsel and the wisdom. And my daughter, the Jake, that God gave me. She been with me for 20 years. How old are you, son? 21. That's my daughter. She been my daughter for 21 years. And we brought you out. You got the nerve to try to steal the affection and the love of my sheep from me. And it came to pass after this that Absalom prepared him chariots and horses and 50 men to run before him. Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate. It was so that when any man that had a controversy came to the king for judgment, then Absalom call himself my son, called unto him and said, of what city are you? He said, your servant is one of the tribes of Israel. Absalom said unto him, see your matters are good and right, but there is no man deputed of the king to hear you. Absalom said, moreover, oh, that I were made judge in this house, that every man which have any suit or cause might come to me in my house, he in David's house, in his daddy's house, and I will do him justice. And it was so that when any man came not to him to do obeisance, he put forth his hand and took him and kissed him. And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of the narrow on those ministry. That's right. Mm -hmm. There's nothing new under the sun. They just think they're doing something new. Stuff been going on. I've been trying to get y'all to understand that for so long. These men that come through here want to buy, want me to sell them a position, lay hands on them and make it them preachers and teachers so they can leave out of my house and go out in the world and start their own church. They done. They just like the man in the book of Acts. I got time. Let's go to Acts. Yeah, I think they can buy the Holy Spirit, J.D. I think I'm selling the truth. I'm not selling the doggone Holy Spirit. You in the... think I'm going to sell you a position, offering me money. Come in my house. I had a guy come in my house, John, when he came in my house. He came to my house. He was paying, giving $400, three, three to four hundred dollars a week. On top of giving the three to four hundred dollars a week, he was giving me three hundred dollars a week. Found out that I wasn't gonna buy a building. That pissed him off. Found out that others wasn't given as much as he was given. So he cut his offering down to a hundred dollars every two weeks or something and just started giving me a hundred. And pretty soon he rebelled and stood up against me in my house, trying to buy me, buy me tailor-made suits, 
buying me worldly coats, giving me all these gifts, because he wanted me to make him somebody because he wanted me to make him somebody you're not coming in here telling me what to do and how to conduct and how to lead and guide my sheep in my house God gave me this house God gave me this family. Amen. God gave me this ministry. Yes, he did. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Verse number 9. Are you there? Amen. Y'all with me? Amen. Amen. Nobody coming here running my house. Amen. You don't like it? <laughs> Amen. Then I give you keys to my house. Amen. Amen. There was a certain man called Simon. I'm at verse number nine. Are y'all there? Amen. Amen. There was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria. Drug addict. That was wrong with the basket. It was a drug addict. He sell drugs. In his imagination, he read his horoscope. Stop that with me. <laughs> Giving out that he giving out that himself talk back with him. <laughs> and this is how he came to preach to whom they all gave what? From the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. To him they had what? Regard. Because that of a long time he did what to him? He tricked them. He tricked them. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus, they were baptized both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered. He was amazed. Beholding the miracles and signs which were done by Philip. Hey, I want to preach like that. I want to do those things that the preacher doing. Now when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, the apostles sent unto them in Samaria Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them, the Samaritans, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet, the Holy Ghost was falling upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They still practicing the ritual. They still practicing the ritual. The church is young. They don't understand. They think water is getting them in. They didn't understand the baptism. So you can be dipped in water. You ain't been convinced, converted. You ain't been convinced, convert, convicted, converted. You ain't been convinced, converted, convinced, convicted, converted, comforted, and conformed. You going to hell. It's five seeds. You got to have all five seeds. You got to have all five seeds. You ain't, you ain't going nowhere without the five seeds. You ain't going nowhere without the five seeds. The five seeds is you got to be convicted. You got to be convinced. You got to be convicted. You got to be converted. You got to have the five seeds. You're going to be confident. Then you're going to be conformed. All of this is making bread, man. This is making bread. Talk to me. With the, talk to me, 
Holy, right? Yeah. Spirit, right? Yeah. Preacher, right? Yeah. Talk to me, y'all. And the word of God. Talk to me, y'all. Without that, you ain't going nowhere. Okay. But say, think about it. You don't know. <laughs> Who talks you that? Where you learn that at? From my Where at? In your life. Read it. Amen. You Amen. See, you've been built up a spiritual house. Oh, yes. You got to be convinced, convicted, converted, confident, and you're going to be conformed. You're being made ready with the Holy Spirit to preach you with the Word of God. Where at? In your, in your house. house. My house. This ain't going to happen in your house, in your mind. You sitting at home. It ain't happening. I don't care what you say. But that's what you don't think. You think you're source. You think you're somebody. You think you can buy this. You think you can learn a little bit of it, then leave here and go learn it. Yeah. You're a thief and a robber. You stole my word that I taught you where at. Yeah. In my house. <clears throat> you took what I taught you and you turned it against me. And you learned it where at? Yeah. In my house. In my family. In my ministry. Verse number 15, who when they will come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet, he, I keep telling y'all the Holy Ghost is a person. It says he, the Holy, the Holy Spirit called himself a he. He the one that dictated these scriptures. I keep telling you he's a person just like you. You just ain't never seen him before. He is the one that's in control of the world. He in control of this whole earth. <clears throat> well, as yet he was falling upon none of them. So if he ain't up on them, is they convinced? No. Is they convicted? No. Is they converted? No. Is they comforted? No. Is they being conformed? No. no, they are not. So they ain't saved this. No. no, they ain't saved. As yet he was falling upon none of them. They just received the word then. Just heard the word, received it, and they sprinkled some water on it. Amen. And that was it. Amen. That was it. Amen. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. This don't happen no more. The church is mature now. Yeah. No more signs, no more gifts. <laughs> and when Simon, uh-oh, when Simon did what? He saw. Oh Lord have mercy. Back in the garden. Yeah, we are. Thank you very much. No. Yes, we are right there. No, no. And when Simon saw that through lay on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given. Talk back with me. He opened You best believe it. He think he can buy truth. Many don't get through here think they can buy truth because they give me some money. They think they're gonna get the truth. I don't been through that. I don't been through it all. I don't see it all happen where it be up. <laughs> and when Samuel saw them through laying on of the apostles saying the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, No money perish with you because you have thought. That the gift of God talk back with you, y'all. I've been through it all. And the individual thought that the gift of God would be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part, talk back with me. Nor a lot. In this matter, where it my house. For your heart is not right. In the sight of God. In my house. Because you giving money. Because you got money. You think I'm supposed to bow to your will because of your money? You perish with your money and get your out of my house. <laughs> Thank you.
Talk back with me, Caleb. Amen. You perish with your money and get your <laughs> out of my house. I'm here selling the truth. Think I'm selling the truth. Think I'm selling the truth. God don't gave it to me. He said, free you receive, free to give. You gonna try to get me to sell it. <laughs> Your heart not right. You need to get out of my house. You have neither lot nor part in predestination. Sovereignty of God. Talk to me, y'all. Amen. I'm gonna preach tonight. Amen. Yourself. Verse 21. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right where it. Repent for that reason of this your what? And pray God and pray perhaps the thought of your heart while he may not even forgive you. Just by having the thought. Many sit here with the evil and wicked thoughts in my house. You better pray to God forgive you for every thought you don't have in my house. You can't sit here while I'm preaching and think evil of the preacher. While I'm preaching his words, you think an evil of the preacher in the preacher's house. You better hope God forgive you for every evil thought y'all don't have in my house. Amen. While I'm Amen. preaching the word, you think an evil of me in my house. And think you're supposed to have the special privilege because you give a certain amount of money. You perish with your money. Amen. You get out of my house and take your money with you. I don't need your money. Amen. Everybody always leaving here trying to hurt me in my house, thinking my house going to suffer because they take their money. Talk back with me. Amen. 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 I'm sick of those devils coming in here, getting mad at me because I expose and I say something about them or how they conduct themselves and behave in my house. You will learn. Y'all take, take notes. I better sit down and behave myself and conduct myself because if I leave here, boy, and I say one thing about the preacher, he's going to expose and tell what I did. <laughs> Don't understand calling me a tailbearer. No, I'm exposing your sin. Amen, amen. I'm talking about preacher, tailbearer, and scandal. He say things she shouldn't say. Yes, I do. He told me to cry loud and stand not. Show you your transgression and your sins, your iniquities. Sitting here lying in my house, thinking evil in my house, stealing my sheep in my house, whispering and lying on me in my house. Verse 21, thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. For your heart is not right in sight of God. Repent therefore of this your wickedness. Pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. No reader. There go. The preacher got perception. I perceive. I know what's going on. I know what's going on in my house. I know what you're trying to do in my house. I know what you are doing in my house. People think I'm stupid, J.D., that I don't have no perception in my house. I know what, what I know what, I know every one of y'all, what y'all conduct behavior is. I know what you think, I know how you act, I know what you believe and you don't, don't believe because I see how you carry yourself in my house. I hear how you talk to me. From now on, I'm going to be doing a teaching. I'm going to have some reverence and some respect in my house or you just don't have to be in my house. But if you're in my house, 
You will going to reverence me. You will going to respect me. Not just the office. You're going to reverence me. And you're going to respect me. Amen. That's what the book says. Yes, it do. Many people still think they're supposed yes, to respect do. the office. I'm going to break that. And I'm going to teach it to you. I'm going to give you word where it says you reference the preacher. Yes, what do you think what it means to say you highly esteem him? Yes, Amen. Yes, Amen. Many got this doctrine in their mind. Oh, I just respect the office. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> I asked the question to the men a while back. And they gave me some answers. It wasn't sufficient for me. So I'm going to teach it. Then I'll give you scripture and definition. Many don't understand. I perceive that you are in the gall of what? Bitterness is in the bond of what? Iniquity. Then I said, Simon, and say, pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which you have spoken come on. You think that what I speak ain't going to come upon you? Okay. Let's give it time. Mm. Let's just give it time. Mm -hmm. if, if what I speak don't come up on you, then I ain't preaching. <laughs> Let's just give it time to see if what I spoke to you would come up on you. Let's just give it time. Mm -hmm. Let's just give it time. Mm -hmm. Then I said, Simon, and said, pray to the Lord for me that none of these things which you have spoken come up on me. And they, when they had testified and preached the word, they didn't even pray for them. <laughs> <laughs> but it deep it, 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 it says that they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of Samaritan. Peace, I ain't got time for you. I'm going to pray for you. You don't, tell a, you don't tell a preacher what to do. I wish Peter would have prayed for him. I wish Peter would have prayed for him. I wish Peter would have prayed for him. You don't tell a preacher what to do. You don't tell a preacher what to do. You don't tell a man what to do in his house. Stole affections from my sheep. Out of my house, so discord yeah. in my house. Yeah. Let's go to Proverbs six fourteen. In my house, sitting in my house, in my ministry, so in discord against me. In my house, Amen. with my preach word, with the word I preach. That you learn in my house, you take the same word that I preach and you learn in my house. And so discord in my family, in my ministry, in my house, with my sheep, my flock. Proverbs chapter 6. Amen. Amen. Verse Amen. number 14. Amen. Verse number 12. Amen. A naughty person. Where at? In your house. A wicked man. In your where at? In your house. Walking with a forward mouth. Where at? In, in my house. house. In my family. In my ministry. After I preach, you take my sheep. Walk them up and down the street behind my back. Or thinking you're doing it behind my back. Mm -hmm. And you pollute them. And you deceive them. And you whisper to them. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. A naughty person. A wicked man. Walking with a forward mouth. He winking with his eyes. He's speaking with his feet. He teaches with his fingers. Forwardness is in his heart. He devises mischief continually in my house, my family, my ministry, with my flock, my sheep, and my daughter. 
He saw it. Discord. He saw it. Discord. In my house. Yes. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly, suddenly upon him when he is put out or he leave your house. My house. Your house. Suddenly shall he be broken. Without calamity. Without Christ. These six things do the Lord hate. Seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. Where at? In your house. A lying tongue. Where at? In your house. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises plans, plots, plans, twists, penetrates. Wicked imagination. Wicked imagination. Feed. Every time I got through preaching, feed. <laughs> Go straight out the door. I been found a dog on the street with my sheep. Couldn't wait till I got through preaching. Couldn't wait till I got through preaching. I'm in here fellowshipping with the flock. He polluted the rest of them up and down the dog on the street. Feed. Feed. Swim! Running! Couldn't wait till I got through preaching. False witness. Sneaky lies. And he put God in life. So discord among my sheep. In my house. With my family. Sought to pollute my sheep. In my house, whispering up and down the street with my sheep in my house, still talking against me about what's going on in, in my house. As a father loving the son, married you to my daughter in my house. As a father loveth the son, married you to my daughter in my house. I hope this opened up your eyes so y'all can see what's going on. Y'all need to be sleep. Because you've been befuddled, you've been hoodwinked. Forgot who house this was. Mm -hmm. It's my house. Amen. Amen. It's my ministry. It's my family that God gave me. As a father loveth the son, I married you to my daughter in my. My ministry, my family, that's my daughter. Yeah. Abuse your privileges in my house, my family, my ministry. Even after you sin in my house, every one of you, I showed you mercy in my house. I, I showed you compassion after you see it in my house, in my family, in my ministry, with my door. I showed you mercy in my house. After you talked about me, said he had hated me, I still showed you compassion. In my house. Long suffering. Put up with your mess. Put up with you. For a long time. 
in my house. Forbear. I forbeared you. Showed you forbearance in my house. I had patience with you. Maybe God will grant you repentance. So I waited for God to work in with his word in my house. Forgiveness I gave after you sinned again and again in my house with my sheep, with my flock. This is more for y'all than it is for them because y'all don't see this. This is more for the rest of you sitting here. The rest of y'all that's still in this ministry that didn't see this, what I was doing. And maybe you just didn't know where you was. But from this day forward, that you in who what? That you in my house. Amen. From this day forward, understand. Amen. You will conduct yourself properly. In your house. You will respect and reverence me. In your house. In my house. Amen. From this day forward. Amen. It's over. Yes, it is. Your wicked, evil ways is over in my house. Forgiveness for your sins were granted to you in my house. When nobody else can want to be bothered with you, I still was loyal and devoted to you in my house. When none would do anything for you, my daughter and I took care of you in my house. I forgave your iniquities that you did, that you committed in my house. I look past all the lies you told, all the lies you did in my house. And most of all, while you were hating on me in my ministry, among my family, in my house, I still loved you. Amen. And I know you was hating on me. While you was hating on me, I still loved you. While you was hating on me. In my ministry, among my families, I still loved you. You are right. I did say those things that I said. You are right. I did say what went on in my house that others may learn to reverence, to fear, to respect my father, his son, my Lord and Savior, his word, quench not his spirit in my house. Now you're trying to smite the shepherd with your tongue to scatter the sheep that I left in my house. Because you smite the shepherd, the sheep going to be scattered. But well, some of us in here so dumb, y'all don't see what the devil is doing. And I he's trying to destroy the shepherd and the sheep. I he's trying to pour down God's house. Y'all don't see it. Now you're trying to smite the shepherd with your tongue to scatter the sheep of my flock in my 
house. So, go back to your house. Look at Matthew 12, 44. Go back to your house. Matthew 12, 44. So, go back to your house. Matthew 12. Matthew 12. And verse 44. Are you there? Amen. Matthew 12 and verse 44. Are you there? Amen. Are you there? Amen. Matthew 12 and verse 44. Like that, don't you, Jay? Matthew 12, 44. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walking through dry places, seeking rest. And he found what? No. No. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he found it in empty, swell, and gone. Then God he to his house. Talk about it. Amen. And taken with himself in his house, talk back with seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, talk to me in his house. So not only do we got himself to deal with, <laughs> I wish I had a wedding man. Got all them evil spirits that he got to deal with now in his house. I'm going to read more of the Y'all can see that. See, now you're learning something like that. It says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, when did the unclean spirit leave the man? When he came and preached, Caleb. Your house. When did the unclean spirit leave, Caleb? Your house. When he came to my house. The word cast us out. I wish I had a witness, J.D. Amen. Amen. The word cast us out. The unclean spirit. So when the unclean spirit never was born again, he never had no faith. He just was cleaned up, just cleaned his life up. But what did what, what the unclean spirit mean? We <laughs> You look, up, you look above it and say the worthlessness of self reformation. Yeah. <laughs> All he did was reform his life with the word of God that he got out of. Yeah. All he did was reform his life. And because your life reformed, that don't mean you're born again. You just reform your life so you can make it in society. That don't mean you're born again. Amen. Because if you was, you wouldn't have been in my house. But that matters. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hypocrisy. Envy. 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 Mm -hmm. And evil speaking. Mm -hmm. When unclean spirit is going out of a man, y'all. He walked it through dry places. He best believe it, daughter, seeking rest. And he found none. Then he said, I will return to, come on, y'all. I'm <laughs> going to my house. Be not the house of God. I'm going back home. Where I came out. When he has come to his house, he finds his house. His house is empty. Straighten up and clink his life up. House is swept and gone. She done clinked his life up. That's what he done did. Came and clinked his life up. Got him a wife, got a job, got good credit again. Straight. 
able to function and pay his bills and got the creditors on his back and all that he got out of my house. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, y'all, the unclean spirit walks through dry places seeking rest. He cannot find none. Then said the unclean spirit, I will return into my house where I came out. I came out. Hello? Mm -hmm. And when he has come, he found that his empty swept and garnished, then goeth he, taking with himself several other spirits more work wicked than himself in his house. Now you know what that means. And they enter in the house. And they dwell in the house. And his last state of that man is worse. Talk back with it. Even so shall it be also to this wicked generation. So go back to your house or metanoia if God will have you. 2 Timothy 2.25. Go back to your house. You can go back to your house or you can metanoia. See, I always give them a little hope, don't I? Because they're still up. Or metanoia. That's if God will have it. Talk back with me. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 25. Amen. Verse 24. Amen. The servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men. See, they say, I ain't like that. But they, ref they, they forget the way I treated them in, your house. in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. In my house. They forget the love I showed them. The forgiveness I showed them. The long suffering I had with them. The compassion I showed them. And all they looking at is now. They forget I was gentle, wasn't I? Right. Not no more with them. Amen. I was gentle. Amen. Every one of y'all know I let them back in my house. I brought them before y'all and had y'all to make a decision. Should they come back in my house? I even counseled them and told them how they're supposed to act. And you steady trying to steal the sheep. Smite the shepherd and try to scatter the sheep of my house. After all the compassion, all the love, all the long suffering that I had. Married you in my house. That's compassion. Loved you in my house. Forgave you in my house. Put up with you in my house. Amen. I put up with you in your house. Knowing what you was doing in my house. <laughs> I knew what you was doing. <laughs> Mm. It's like I was stupid. I didn't know you was going behind my back. I know what I know what's going on in my house. Man, you was a dumb man. You have to know what's going on in your house. Amen. You got a problem. Yes, I do. Blindness. You got a problem. Yes, sir. Serious problem. Something wrong with you, John. Yes. Something wrong with you, Cleo. They thought you were sweet. Yeah, they thought I was sweet. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> but I was misplaced. Yeah. Manifesting the characteristics of Christ. Amen. That's all I was doing. Mm -hmm. They didn't understand that. They did. I wasn't sleep on the job. I'm a watchman. Yes, <laughs> What's wrong with you? I didn't know what's going on. I'm a watchman. I see everything. And I ain't got to look for it. Did you hear what I said, J.D.? 
And I ain't got to look for it. Amen. You see, they say, no, he's not gentle. Mm -hmm. Not to you. <laughs> After you don't conduct, not the way you, not to you, based on the way you conducted yourself in my house. Gentle to you for what? I've been gentle. Stole out of my house. Instead, he caused a confusion in my house. Whispering against me in my house. Talking about me in my house. Now you're going out of my house and you won't stop trying to tear down my house. In meekness, instructing, and the servant of the Lord must not strive but be gentle until all act to teach. Patient. You're going to tell me I wasn't patient with you in my house? You, didn't, you gonna tell me I didn't try to teach you in my house? You gonna tell me I wasn't gentle towards you in my house? Meekness. You gonna tell me I wasn't, I didn't have no meekness when I instructed you? When you cried? In my house? In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves where at? In my house. If God peradventure will yeah. give them repentance yeah. to the acknowledging of the truth, that they may do what, y'all? Out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him and his will and move them out of my house. The devil don't took you captive. You don't even know it. You're steady working for him trying to tear down your house. St. John 2.10. I'm reading this out there. I'm reading this out of 2 John 2.10. Read out there. 2 John chapter 2. I wish you could get that. <coughs> Read it out of the 5. Cleo said he left the book here. Why are you leaving it up there? You need to get rid of it, man. You got two? Yeah. Oh, all right. That's all right. You got you got you got yours? Mm -hmm. Oh. Second John 2.10. That's what I'm reading from. Amplified. I want to read, I want to read nine. Man said this this morning. I well, y'all got that text this morning. <laughs> everybody, Van, Van sent me that. When Van said that, I sent that to everybody. Van, you see, I, I showed you that, didn't you? Yes, I sent it to the whole congregation. I see. Y'all going to Van and something else. Mm -hmm. And this is what I tell y'all when y'all read. This is, you don't do this in my house. <laughs> don't do this in my house. When I'm reading, I tell you to stop, stop. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to learn nothing trying to run off ahead of me. And I've been telling y'all this. You can't teach me in my house. Amen. Amen. You can show me some things. I'll consider it. I said, Carolyn, show me. Carolyn did something. Show, show me something the other night. I said, Carolyn, you should have shown me that right then and there. I could have used it. If I feel fit to use it, I'll use it. It's my house. Amen. Nobody run my house. I said, Carolyn, you should have you said, preacher. Uh, so and so, so. I said, Carolyn, I could have used that. That could have been edified for the congregation. Y'all got y'all arco volume? Anybody got their arco volume? Yeah. Uh. Wait on you, roll. You see how you go whack. Whack, whack. Where you sign? You gonna act like right? I'm gonna give you all the books. I got it. all these. Don't give. I got sign. You gonna act? You might have a relapse. Give <laughs> you all these books. I got all, all the books in the one every room. Give you. I got one right here. You say that? I got handcuffs on. Oh, all right. I take his word. <laughs> Carolyn, show me this in the Arco volume. Carolyn, show me this in the Arco volume. The other night. 
And I told him, I said, Carolyn, you should have shown me, you should have told me. If we was on page 885, where are you going? 86? 86. We're going to start on 85. I'm on page 85. Dominic Yale's interview. I'm on page 85. Y'all got this, don't y'all? Yeah, it's um, on the book. Yeah. All what I tell you to do. Don't y'all need this book? Don't you keep them in that bag? Don't you not take these books out your bag? All right, y'all got those who got them on page 85. And don't you keep these small books in your bag? Didn't I? Yeah. Keep these books in your bag. Such small books, keep it in your bag. I tell you to take them out. All y'all supposed to have. I'm on page 85. I'm, I'm at the middle of the page where it says, I asked her. Mm -hmm. It says, I asked her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are y'all there? Yes. I asked her if she had ever seen in the private life of Jesus any signs of such disposition, amours, affection. She said, she said she had not. I asked him if she saw in him any particular fondness for female society. She said she had not. If anything, rather the contrary, that young Bethal, or Bethul, the word for the Hebrew for young women, were all very fond of him, fond of him, and were always seeking his society. And yet he seemed to care nothing for them. And if they appeared too fond of him, he treated them almost with scorn, because that's not what he came for. He will often get up and leave them, wander away and spend his time in meditation and prayer. He is a perfect, he is a perfect ascetic in his life, separated off by himself. When I see how the people like to be with him, ask him questions, seem to take such delight with his answers, both men and women, and almost vexes me. This is an interview that Leal did of Joseph and Mary. They say there is a young woman in Bethany whom he intends to marry. But unless he changes his course very much, he will never be qualified to have a family. But I do not believe the report. He never seems to me to care anything about women when he is in my presence. It's not that he didn't have affection for them. The Bible tells us he was tempted in all points as we were, yet without sin. He came for one mission, and that was to die on the cross. So, that's why he didn't take a wife, have children, because it would have discouraged what this hardened was said in him, based wow. on who he was. Mm -hmm. He was God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thus it seems that Joseph and Mary have both lost all confidence in his becoming anything. They seem to think that the Sanhedrin should do something for him to get him out and let him show himself to the people. I tried to console them by telling them that my understanding of the prophecy was that he had to come to the high priesthood first and there work in the spiritual dominion of the heart. That's where he does his work at. He's supposed to dominate your understanding. And that's what I teach. I teach that the word of God dominates your understanding and should, because it's sure enough to do mine, in my house. When he had brought about a unity of heart and oneness of aim, it would be easy enough to establish his political claim. All who would, all who would not willing to submit to him, it would be an easy matter with the sword of Joshua Gideon to bring under his control. It seemed to me that his parents' ideas are of a selfish character, that they care nothing about the Jewish government or the Roman, government, Roman oppression. All they think of is self-exaltation and to be personally benefited by their son's greatness. But I told them they were mistaken, that the building up of the kingdom of heaven was not to be done with might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. That's Zechariah 4 6. That's what he's quoting right there. Zechariah 4 6. Look at Zechariah 4 6. We got time. Come on. Come on, Miss Look at Zechariah 4 6. Look at Zechariah 4 6. Look at Zechariah. Zechariah. 
Zechariah 4, 6. Are you there? Amen. Are you there? Amen. Amen. He's talking about the church, but I'm going to have time to read all that. Look down in verse number. Well, let's read down to it. And the angel that, I'm in verse 1. And the angel that talked with me came again and walked me as a man, and wake as a man that is waking out of his sleep. And said unto me, What says you? I said, I have looked, behold, a candlestick all of gold, with the bowl upon the top of it. Seven lamps thereon, seven pipes to the lamps, which are upon the top thereof. This is the church. And two olive trees, the priest and the king. Two olive trees is the priest and the king. By it. One upon the right side of the bowl, the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Know it you not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he, then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saying what? The Lord of hosts. That's how he's going to build this church. Amen. That's how the church is built. Not by power, nor by might. The Holy Spirit is going to build the church. That's why it's passing. Amen. That's what that's talking about. That's what he's talking about in your book. But I told them that they were mistaken, that the building up of the kingdom of heaven was not to be done by might nor power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. So you can put Zechariah 4, 6 back right by that. In your book, you can put Zechariah 4, 6, where it say, by might nor by power. And it would not do for us to use carnal weapons. That's what Paul got the saying from in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, when he said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. He learned that from Gamaliel. A lot of teachings that Paul learned from Gamaliel, he incorporated when he was preaching. So 2 Corinthians 10, 4 come from what he learned from Gamaliel. Because Gamaliel was Paul's teacher. Paul went against everything he, he taught. He went against his teacher. Everything Gamaliel taught him, he threw it out the window. For that smear Christ, that's what he's talking about in Philippians chapter 3. He said, I count all of that gone. Paul was at the top of his class. Couldn't touch Paul in the classroom. Paul was the man. Couldn't touch Paul. Superseded all his teachings, all that had ever came before him. Paul was the man. Paul was dedicated. He was loyal. He was devoted. I strive to be like I strive to be like Paul, but I'm being conformed to the image of Christ. I strive to be like Paul, but I'm, I'm being conformed to the image of Christ. Paul is my example. Paul was closer to Christ than Peter was. When you when you you want to look at a, a, a hierarchy in the apostles, you go to Jesus, then you go to Paul. Paul wrote two thirds of the New Testament. Paul was the man. Peter couldn't understand some of the things that Paul was teaching. Peter didn't rebuke Paul. Paul rebuked Peter. Peter walked with Jesus for three and a half years. Three years and three and a half years. Peter didn't check Paul. Paul checked Peter. But I told them that they were mistaken that the building up of the kingdom of heaven was not to be done by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. And it would not do for us to use carnal weapons. That's what Paul said. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Nor to expect carnal pleasures to be derived therefrom. That it was not my understanding of the prophecy that this king was to use such weapons, either for himself or for the benefit of a party, but for the good of all men, that his dominion was to be universal. And it was to be of a spiritual character. You are built up a spiritual house. That he was sent to the lost. And not to the father. So I told you to go to 2 John. This is what I'm going to end it. 2 John. Now I want to look at verse number 9. 
I love this man who said this. And I've been telling y'all, stop going ahead of me. When we, I, let me tell you how evil these people is. This, uh, this seed of doubt, and I'm not the preacher, and you don't need to go to the preacher, but everything has been sold into the minds of a few individuals here. I just, I seen it when I was teaching Sunday. While I'm teaching, you are not to be referencing other scriptures. That is very disrespectful. When I'm teaching, and I say go to 2 John 9, you're not supposed to be reading with me in 2 John 9, and then you decide to go to Romans 5, 5. That's very, very disrespectful. I'm not going to put up with that in my house. Amen. Now, if you feel you can teach yourself better than I can, you can stay at home in your house and you can teach yourself. Amen. Amen. But it's very disrespectful. Yes, it is. When I'm supposed to be your shepherd and your pastor and your teacher. And I say go to 2 John 9. And while I'm teaching 2 John 9, you don't like my exegesis in 2 John 9. So you turn to Romans 5, 5. I see it. I see it. And I'm not going to be disrespected. And I'm not going to put up with it in my house. I'm going to start calling them out. They get angry and they want to leave. Go home and teach yourself in your house. You're not going to disrespect me in my house. That's out. The day's over. That seed of doubt has been planted in certain individuals' minds and they're about to fall. I'm letting y'all know right now. I see it. I'm at 2 John chapter 2, verse 9. Anyone. I'm at 2 John 2, verse 9. Anyone who runs on ahead of God. And that's what they do. While I'm teaching this, you don't turn your Bible to Romans 5, 5. And I'm here. Because you don't like my exegesis. The reason I don't tell you what exegesis means I want those that do it to go look it up. That's why I don't give you the definition for exegesis. I'm teaching here, you don't went to another scripture. I used to see individuals doing that that's not here anymore. I be teaching, they be, be whispering. They be on turn their Bible somewhere else. They, going to get, they, they think I'm stupid like I ain't see that going on in my house. I see everything. Because the Bible tells me to forbear. The Bible tells me to be long suffering. Well, my long suffering, my macro through me up, done reached its limit with certain individuals. I'm not going to be long suffering anymore. You're going to toe the line or hit the door. Remember, when you hit the door, say it, because I wouldn't toe the line like he said. Say it. I want you to say it. I wouldn't toe the line like he said in his house. I want you to say it. I want him to say it, John. Because it's true. You're not going to run my house. You're not going to tell me how to preach and teach in my house. When I say, I say, y'all, walk with me. So y'all walk with me in the scripture. Walk with me. I said, walk with me. Stay with me. Because if you run ahead of me, you run get lost. When I taught, when I taught, when I taught Isaiah 63, fruit people in here did not like when I got to the part with the shepherd. Because they got this seed of doubt in their mind that they can learn to get a revelation without the shepherd because it's been planted in their minds. 
It's been planted in their minds that they can go to God by themselves, pray to God, and God going to give them an answer outside the preacher and the word of God. You pray to God. That's what you're supposed to do. Prayer means to bow to the will of God. Amen. That's what it means. They think prayer, they think they can go to God and ask God for something and he's going to do it. That's what they think. The Bible do not teach that nowhere. There's nowhere teaching that. Nowhere. Nowhere. Turn your Bible to turn your Bible to Acts chapter 8. I got time. Go to Acts chapter 8. Go to Acts chapter 8. Let me show you something. I don't know what I know where they got it from. Certain individuals that left here and taught that doctrine while they was in my house. Go to Acts. Go to Acts. Amen. Verse 26. Are you there? Amen. Are you there? Yes. Are you there? Amen. I'm at verse 26. It says, And the angel of the Lord spake to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, and eunuch of great authority. Under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all of her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, he read a silence the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join yourself to this chariot. Stop. Why didn't the angel of the Lord go to the, 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 the Ethiopian? Why didn't the spirit just go to the Ethiopian? Because that's not God's order. He's going to do it through man. The angel of the Lord could have went to the Ethiopian himself. He didn't have to tell Philip nothing. The Holy Spirit could have went to the Ethiopian himself. He didn't need Philip, did he? That's not the order. He's sitting there, he's reading Isaiah. He's reading the book of Isaiah. He's reading the book of Isaiah. That's what he's reading. He's reading Isaiah 53. That's what the Ethiopian is reading. While he's reading Isaiah 53, the angel of the Lord tells Philip, get up, go that way. When he get there, the spirit, Philip, get over there. Hello? Mm -hmm. He did not go to the Ethiopian, Ethiopian himself. No. Did he? No. He gonna go through Philip. Yes. Amen. Acts is the beginning of the church. God is not gonna change his ways and his method. I want y'all to stop and understand that. If God wanted the Ethiopian to know whether Jesus, Jesus is the one who's in charge now, the Father put all things in his hands. He could have had the angel, Jesus could have said, angel, go to the Ethiopian. And the angel would have went. Jesus could have said, Holy Spirit, go directly to the Ethiopian. And the Holy Spirit would have went. But the protocol and the order is, Jesus, Holy Spirit, man, Ethiopia. It's not going to change. But this evil, wicked individual that though left this ministry started a false doctrine in my house have certain individuals believing that they don't have to come through me or they don't need a preacher for revelation. I was going to do this Sunday. I'm going to do it now. Where's your... I'm going to do it two times. Where's your... All things for good. I'm going to do it now. And I'm going to do it again Sunday. And I got your red stuff. Did I bring yours? I got yours somewhere. I'm going to do this now, but I'm going to do it again Sunday. 
Turn it to 106. 106. Page one. Page 106. I said, everybody. Amen. Amen. 106. Amen. Top of the book. Amen. Top of the book. Amen. Read, JD. The means of our effectual all. The ordinary means which the Lord uses in calling us is not by raptures and revelations. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do all the defining on that subject. I just want, to, want you to get this part right here. Go ahead, JD. But it is by his word, mm -hmm. which is the rod of his strength, mm -hmm. Psalms 105 and 2. Mm -hmm. The voice of the word is God's call to us. Therefore, who is the voice? Here, the preacher. preacher. Go ahead. Therefore, mm -hmm. he is said to speak to us from heaven, Hebrews 12, 25. Who speaks to you from heaven? Yeah. Who speaks to you? From heaven, say I don't know, because you don't understand. No, you no, no, he no, no, don't. You don't understand. Say I don't understand. Right, because you read the book and you don't understand, and you guess. Because if you understood, you wouldn't have guessed. Start over again, J.D. Start over again, J.D. Please. please. The means of our effectual call, the ordinary means which the Lord uses in calling us, is not by raptures and revelations. But it is by his word, what, what? which is the rod of his strength. Yes. Psalms 105 and 2. Hmm. The voice of the word of God mm -hmm. is, I'm sorry, the voice of the word is God's call to us. Who is the voice? The preacher. I read. Therefore, he is said to speak to us from heaven. Who is he speaking to you from heaven? The, the voice. No, it's not. The preacher. Who, who is speaking from heaven? God! How is he speaking from heaven? Thank you very much! Amen. Now you got it, Carolyn. God is speaking to you through me! God is speaking from heaven to you through the preacher. That's what we're going to read in Acts. Amen. He don't change. Read, Jenny, start over again. Now they got the understanding. The means of our effectual call, the ordinary means which the Lord uses in calling us, is not by raptures and revelations, <laughs> but is by his word, which is the rod of his strength, Psalms 105 and 2. The voice of the word look. is God's call. To <laughs> look, look. Therefore, he, that's God, God, is said to speak to us from heaven, Hebrews 12, 25. And it told you, refuse is not him to speak. Amen. Read. That is, in the ministry. Thank you. Earth. In the ministry. What? Amen. In the ministry. In the family. In the house. Amen. Where are you going to find the word at? In my house. Where you gonna find the word at? In my family. Where you gonna find the word spoken at? In my ministry. Where you gonna hear the word of God at? In my house. In my ministry. In my family. This is where you gonna hear from God at. Amen. Now ain't no rapture. He ain't gonna take you up and put you in an ecstasy somewhere. <laughs> Amen. Now go ahead, J.D., in the ministry. Go ahead, that J.D. is, in the ministry of the word. Go ahead. When the word calls from sin, it is as if we heard a voice from heaven. Uh-huh. By his spirit. Uh-huh. This is the loud call. No, it's not. It's I'm supposed to be silent. This is the loud. It's a loud call. Why is it loud? Because while I'm preaching, you thinking, and I got to shut you up so you can hear me and stop talking to your damned self. Amen. I mean it just like I said. Because he the 
believe not as damned already. So while I'm preaching, you talking to your damned self. The self is damned. That's what the Bible says. He that believeth not is damned already. He that believeth not in his baptism is not baptized. The end of the book of Mark is damned. Because people don't understand how I use the word damned. I use these words hyper, hi, hyperbole and metaphorically. And they say other things that I'm saying. Because of one individual that don't came here and stole the affection of my sheep. Absalom. <laughs> it's a loud calling. Yes, it is. It's loud. Mm -hmm. It's loud because while I am preaching, mm -hmm. you are talking to yourself, mm -hmm. seeking to analyze and interpret the word of God on your own. And by my voice being loud, I'm stopping you from hearing you so you can hear from heaven. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm talking loud. So you won't hear you while I'm preaching. But stupidity, Absalom said, you see how he always hollering at us? I've been trying to holler at you, you jackass, so you wouldn't hear yourself. Amen. Amen. See, you heard that, didn't you? <laughs> And you understood it, didn't you? Amen. And now you know why I holler, don't you? Mm -hmm. So once I get your once I get your attention, like I got now, and I cause you to understand with a loud voice, I can calm down that game. <laughs> but while I'm preaching, you're trying to hear yourself. So I'm trying to I'm trying to speak over you. Talk back with me. Right. Man. Although you ain't saying nothing at all, with it. Mm -hmm. preach, mix it. <laughs> Although you ain't saying nothing literally, verbally out of your mouth, you're talking to yourself while I am seeking to preach and teach you. So I got to get loud so you won't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Start over, Jenny, number two. When you finish, just read number two and that's going to be it. Okay. Read. By his spirit, mm -hmm. this is the loud call. Here. The word is the instrumental cause. Thank you. Did I just teach you that? Yes. Did I teach you that? Uh -huh. Did I not just teach you that out of beyond the basis of syntax? Did I not teach you that out of here? It says the word of God is the instrumental cause. I am the intermediate agent. The Holy Spirit is the ultimate agent. I guarantee you that's going to say the same thing I taught you. Read, J.D. The word is the instrumental cause of our conversion. Uh-huh. The spirit is the efficient. Uh-huh. The ministers of God are only the pipes and organs. It is the spirit blowing in them that effectually changes the heart. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. I've been telling y'all that. Amen. I'm not the first one to say it that. But, but Absalom has whispered in some people's ear. Stole. And stole the affections of my people. Stole. Uh -huh. Stole their heart. Out of, his, out of his father's house. What? Out of his father's house he stole. Came in my house and stole. You know, stole their heart. You go over there to the book, back over the second sentence, says, stole their heart. Yep. When you hear my voice, it's going to change your heart. That's why I talk loud. That's why the Bible says, cry loud and spare not. Because at the same time that I'm trying to teach you, self is trying to teach you at the same time. That's the truth. So my voice has to overpower your voice in your head so you can hear God speaking from heaven. John said that earlier. He said, he said, I don't know God's voice, but now I'm starting to hear your father in my head. Amen. That's all he's supposed to hear. Mm -hmm. He's supposed to hear nobody else. Say that. Mm -hmm. We got him. He him. He him. You know Do you know why Mama Rhonda Van is here? You know what brought them here? How can you hear without a preacher? Amen. That's what brought them here. Constantly with 
What you say? Scared, scared us to the narrow way. You talking about he too loud? No. Yeah, I'm too loud because you don't want to hear me. You want to hear yourself. <laughs> Hello. So you don't want to hear me. So I don't know. What I put it in my book. I put it in my book. You don't want to hear me say, "Dad, why are you so loud?" Look, look, Karen. This is what they say. Karen, Karen. This is what they say. Why are you so loud? I can't even hear myself think. <laughs> they say he's so loud, I cannot even hear. <laughs> he's so loud, I cannot even hear myself think. Yeah, you preaching. Amen. That's what they say. Ain't he loud? Yeah. That's all y'all say. So they want you to say, yeah, he loud. They want you to agree and say, they want you to finish the sentence and say, I can't even hear myself think. And then they're going to say, me too. <laughs> what? Say it again. It's a loud call, church. Yeah. Thomas Watson is one of the most notable Puritan preachers it is in history. He is powerful. All his books is in cemetery, seminary schools, universities. He's one of the most sought after writer it is. I got my firstborn son of the spirit. He don't told me now. I don't care us. What commentary you read? I don't care about none of them books you read. He don't tell me all I'm interested in is thus said the Lord. You dumbbell, you don't you know that dog on King James Bible is corrupt? Hmm. You was raised on commentary. <laughs> now they out there talking about we we reading all these books and all these commentaries and they don't care. They was raised on commentaries. Where at? In your house. And they're talking about, yeah, they reading out all them books and carrying all. I don't care none. If it ain't a thus said the Lord, this is corrupt. They forget what you taught us and how many people sit down and wrote this together. You ain't got to, yeah, they don't forget. But I can't be just listen to this. This is corrupt, John. That's why we define the word. <laughs> 46 white men wrote this. Some of them believe in free will and the other half was Roman Catholics. 46 white men, the ones that understood the Greek and the Hebrew, they kicked them out. <laughs> this is corrupt. It's just half Roman Catholicism and half free will. That's what your Bible is. That's when I get to certain script, I say that word is not in the text. But my firstborn son of the Spirit don't tell me if it ain't a dust, if it ain't a literal right here, he ain't here. Baptist church. No, God no. have mercy on his soul. Yes. He was raised in it. That's the first thing I taught him here was this is a corrupt text. That's why you need, why do you think I got Greek books? They Latin books. They stupid. Because of one individual, because Absalom don't stole the affection. He don't stole the hearts of my people. Just like Absalom did in David's game. Exactly what happened here. So now, don't nobody want to respect and reverence me no more. Everybody thinks it's just the office. No, it's not. No, it's not. You respect my, you respect and reverence my office. You respect and reverence my ministry. You respect and reverence my family. You respect and reverence my, my, uh, my house. You respect and reverence my age. And you respect the reverence, my youthfulness. You respect me. You reverence me. I just say fear. What I say, Carolyn? That is fear. It's a respectable fear. It's not, oh, I'm scared of the priest. I'm scared of the sheep. No, no, no. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about respect. And many don't understand that because of one absolute. Now go to the book back to the Acts. So see, that's what I'm telling you. So you see, right? 
He didn't have to use uh, Philip did. No. Go back, go back. The 26. He say, and the angel of the Lord spake to Philip. The angel of the Lord, I said, go back to verse 26. Amen. I said, go back to verse 26. Amen. Follow me. I said, go back to verse 26. Amen. That's why many of you be confused. It said the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip. Stop right there. The angel of the Lord could have went himself. Why did he tell Philip? Because that's God's protocol. I speak through man. He didn't have to use Philip if he didn't want to. He God. He didn't need Philip. He don't need, God don't need Philip. You need another man to speak through a man. But that's how he does it. That's his protocol. That's his order. And he's not going to change. Absalom don't came in here and said, God changed. The angel of the Lord can go straight to the Ethiopian. <laughs> At the top of that, that verse, it says, Philip and the Ethiopian. It don't say Philip. It don't say the angel of the Lord and the Ethiopian. It don't say the Holy Spirit and the Ethiopian. And it says, let's read, the angel of the Lord, the angel, the messenger of God, the messenger of the Lord, spectacled to Philip, saying, Arise, go toward the south unto, unto the way. They go down from Jerusalem and Gaza, which is which is desert, right? Yes. So the angel gave him some instruction. Right? Yes. He arose and followed the instruction. Did he? Yes. He went. That's what it says, right? Yes. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for the worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot. Read as science, you talk about the book of Isaiah, the prophet. Then the spirit, after the angel of the Lord, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Then the spirit said unto Philip. So you had the angel of the Lord speak to Philip, right? Yes. Yes. Then when Philip got there, the Holy Spirit took over David. Yes, he did. All right, so you had two people speak to Philip before Philip could speak to the Ethiopian, right? Mm -hmm. So you, he, didn't, he could have used any one of those two just to talk straight to the Ethiopian. Could he? Yes, he did. Yeah. But the Lord didn't want to do it. The Lord used the danger because all, everything is up under his power. Then he used the spirit. Mm -hmm. Is that what our Bible says? Yeah. Yeah. He said, then the spirit said to Philip, go near and join yourself to this chariot. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Esaias and said, y'all ready? Yeah. Yeah. Understandest thou what you readest? Can y'all read? Can y'all read? Yes. Read 31. Yes. And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? Thank you very much. You can't understand unless a man guides you. God Almighty. When you don't understand, it ain't nobody teaching you nothing. He said, How can I accept some man guide me? They ignorant. They just despise authority. Mm -hmm. That's what the whole thing is. They Amen. want to do what they want to do. Amen. They want the word of God the way they want to go, but you ain't going to get it like that out of my house. Mm -hmm. You can hang that up. Second John, chapter 9. So when you read it, I tell you to stop, stop. Don't try to go ahead of me else you're not going to get no understanding. You try to go ahead of me, you try to beat me to the yeah. You try. See, and that's what happened in here. What happened with Absalom, Absalom will read ahead of me, so Absalom can steal the hearts of the people. Y'all need to go back over there and read that. So he ran ahead. Did you see he said he had chariots and men? He goes ahead of me. So by the time I get to the at the part to explain, he already don't read it. And he wants y'all to think he got revelation and got it from God before I give it to you. Oh, man, I know all the tricks of the devil. What? That's why I'm standing. That's why I'm a pastor. And I put up with that. I know you did back there. I know you did. So Absalom is going to go ahead and read ahead and then say, I told you preacher was going to say that. I told you he was going to say that. Didn't I say the same thing? Didn't I do the... I had already talked the individual. And the individual talking about, see, I, I knew he was going to say that. Hell, you on the phone with me two, three hours? <laughs> I already don't told you. 
Then you're going to pretend like God gave it to you by yourself. Special revelation. Don't happen like that. That's why I give y'all books to read. Don't happen like that. Anyone who runs from a, now, y'all got it? Yeah. Yeah. Anyone who runs from the head of God and does not abide in the doctrine. Where are you gonna get the doctrine from, Carolyn? You're gonna get the doctrine from me. <laughs> Where are you gonna get the doctrine from? From your house. From your house. Anyone who runs from the head of God does not abide in the doctrine of Christ, who is not content with not content with what he taught. Does not, there God told you ain't got God. I keep telling you these people ain't got God. Does not have God. No, he who continues to live. Mm -hmm. And that's what I told y'all this morning. Mm -hmm. And that's what I told y'all everybody. Yeah. I pray to God give you a real living uh, practical faith. Mm -hmm. But he who continues to live in the doctrine, this is something you gotta live. Yeah. Hmm. Teaching, the teaching, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You see that from a teacher, don't you? Yeah. But he who continues to live in the doctrine, teaching, does have what? God. He has both the Father and the what? Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, is disloyal to what Jesus taught. Do not receive him. Do not accept him. Do not welcome him or admit him in to your house. Don't you listen to nothing they say. And I've been telling y'all, stop listening to them. Stop talking to these people that don't left this ministry. Leave them alone. They disloyal to what Jesus Christ taught. No. They disloyal. Verse number 10. If anyone, what is a, what do the anyone's do? They bring another doctrine and they run ahead of God, don't they? Yes. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. Why do they run ahead of God? So they can bring you another doctrine. Mm -hmm. That's what the anyone's do. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. Wow. But, but I knew I knew about predestination and sovereignty of God before I even got there. No, you didn't. You had an idea. You had an idea about it. You didn't know it. Because it must be taught. Anyone who runs, let's look at verse number nine again. Anyone who runs on ahead of God does not abide in the doctrine of Christ who is not content with what he taught does not have God. I've been telling y'all that. I don't know how long. But he who continues to live in the doctrine, how do you live in the doctrine? Showing up here on Thursday night, showing up here on Sunday, obeying and doing what I teach you, doing what I teach you in the house. Conducting yourself and behaving yourself founded upon what I tell you to do in my house. Amen. Amen. You think you can teach yourself? Go back. I'm not mad at you. I'm not going to be mad at anybody. Just tell them I didn't want to go. I didn't like the rules and the regulations that he had in his house. He said that was his house. He said that was his family. He said that was his ministry. And I ain't doing that. He ain't going. He ain't going to teach me like that. Anyone who runs on the head of God does not abide in that doctrine of Christ who is not content with what he taught does not have God, but he who continues to live in the doctrine, teaching of Christ does have God. He has both the Father and the Son. That's why I love them, them uh, exhortations, y'all were saying this morning, especially Carolyn. You need to return to the old past. When people first came here, they was loyal to this doctrine. Wasn't they y'all? Yes. They were sold out. Now, they see the doubt Absalom has stolen the hearts of my people. If anyone comes to you and does not break this doctrine, is disloyal to what Jesus Christ taught, do not receive him, do not accept him, do not welcome or admit him into your house or bid him God's feed or give him any encouragement. For he who wishes him success, who encourages him, wishing him God's speed, is a partaker in his what? Evil Amen. Ooh. Let me tell y'all, leave him alone. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for your word.